Bishop, the android portrayed by Lance Henriksen in Aliens, including his offshoots, may be the most prolific character in the Alien franchise. As far as the movies go, we have the original Bishop appearing in Aliens and partially in Alien 3. There's Bishop 2, aka Michael Bishop from Alien 3, and Charles Bishop Wayland in Alien vs. Predator. The character returned in video game form, appearing in Aliens vs. Predator and Aliens Colonial Marines with Lance Henriksen lending his voice work. In comics, we saw Bishop in the William Gibson Alien 3 adaptation, and in the new Marvel comics, a Bishop model played a prominent role in Alien Bloodlines. What stands out as unique among all these iterations is the Bishop we see in the 1992 Kenner action figure line and its associated Space Marines comics. This was an interesting interpretation, to say the least. The series of comics produced by Dark Horse, which came included with the action figures, provided an idea of the unfortunately scrapped animated series Operation Aliens. The concept was, to be sure, more kid-friendly, and saw some of our favorite Aliens characters in episodic adventures where the gang traveled the universe, exterminating all traces of xenomorph outbreaks along the way. Ripley, Hicks, Sapone, and Drake were all back to stomp some bugs, with their own redesigns of course, and their android buddy Bishop was there to help. Heavily armored, with a special visor and robotic head plating, Bishop was armed to the teeth and assisted in these missions. Each figure came with a bio card on the packaging which could be cut out and used as a trading card. According to Bishop's bio card, his specialties included med lab research and reserve piloting. He was assembled on planet LX-469. Background details state that he is the latest series of Hyperdyne Android, designed to study alien creatures. And a quote from Bishop, Alien bio survival rating 95.78. Incredible. His abilities seem to be vast and are quite useful. Built into his programming are motion tracker readings to pick up on converging enemies, and he has access to each Marine's personal data transmitter. He can also access the PDTs of any colonists on any settlement they happen to visit. Such abilities are in full display in Space Marines Issue 1, Desert Storm, which originally came included with the Bishop action figure. The comic is narrated by Bishop, explaining the investigation of a possible xenomorph infestation in Sector 27. This is confirmed when Bishop is attacked and damaged, focally letting out a system alert. A pwn provides backup in the Stinger XT-37 vehicle, which was also a toy available from the Kenner line. And just as an interesting little aside, this vehicle also makes a cameo appearance in the recent alien novel Alien Colony War. So I guess it's officially a canonical vehicle now. Bishop warns that his sensors detect xenomorphs beneath the sand. As they emerge and advance on Apone, Bishop fires away at the acid-squirting creatures, easing the sergeant's worries by reminding him, don't worry, my hyperdyne programming prevents me from harming you. Despite Bishop's efforts, Apone is captured and brought to the Xenomorph Hive. Corporal Hicks is called for backup. When Hicks arrives, he notices the damage Bishop has taken on, and more of his abilities are revealed. Heads up, Bishop. What's your status? Is your CPU intact? Affirmative, Corporal Hicks. I've rerouted power to undamaged areas. Boy, you hyperdyne units are really built to last. Thank you, sir. These comics were episodic in nature, often leaving on cliffhangers, as is the case here. To get the full story, well, you'd have to buy all the toys, of course. The rescue was depicted in the next comic, Operation Rescue, which came with the Scorpion Alien action figure. Bishop played a part in all of these comics, often showcasing his robotic abilities and having standout lines here and there. In the issue Standoff, which came with a Drake action figure, Bishop pilots the EVAC fighter vehicle on a jungle planet, capturing an alien queen. Cool. Canned queen, Drake exclaims. But what do we do with it now? Perhaps you haven't noticed, but you happen to be at the foot of an active volcano. Quite convenient for xenomorph disposal. And he drops the captive queen into the lava, much to Drake's glee. Way to go, metalhead. Bug stew, he shouts. And you can get an idea of how the feel would be if this had in fact been translated into a Saturday morning cartoon. The EVAC fighter, by the way, was also available from Kenner. If there's any arc to the character to be found within these mini-comics, it could be that Bishop gradually develops a sense of humor, thanks presumably to his time with the Marines. Take for example issue 7, Showdown, where the Marines visit a colony Terraform 3, a Tuva settlement set up to resemble a town reminiscent of the Wild West. 
They all feel the rumbling of an oncoming vehicle. Bishop observes. It is a gravity-modified ground transport, sir. Although the operator seems to think it can fly, in reference to its rapid speed. Hicks responds. Good one, Bishop. Your computer chip brain is getting a sense of humor. And maybe the best or most flagrant example of this, depending on your own humor, occurs in issue 12, Ice Storm. Bishop's arm is injured, and his ability to assist his fellow Marines is called into question. To even the playing field, he equips a power loader with tanks of fast freezing water in order to immobilize an infestation of xenomorph rhino hybrids. This method is successful in subduing the creatures, colonists held captive within Hive are saved. Upon return, Bishop meets back with Hicks, who asks, How are you, Bishop? Any problems? Other than your arm, I mean. Bishop's response, No. Everything's cool. For now. A pun worthy of Schwarzenegger. Needless to say, the harsh, intense world of James Cameron's aliens was toned down significantly to appeal to a younger audience. The differences we see in the characters aesthetically, I suppose, is more for variety reasons and incentive to buy more of these figures. If all of the Marines looked similar enough, in the same kind of fatigues, it wouldn't be too enticing, so each has a unique design. Bishop, in any normal circumstance within the Alien universe, is an android designed to blend in with humans and appear human. But in the world of action figures, mini-comics, and potential cartoon programs, I guess the robot is best being very obviously a robot. And of course, when it comes to licensing merchandise, there's always the fine line between what represents the likeness of the character and what represents the likeness of the actor. You'll notice in promotional images, and notably the bio cards included with the figures, that many of these characters are portrayed by different actors. Ripley, Drake, and Apone are quite obviously not Sigourney Weaver, Mark Rolston, and Al Matthews, as in the film. However, the image used for the Hicks figure is, in fact, a promotional image of Michael Bean from the actual film. This all could be due to likeness licensing, or it could be due to finding an appropriately dynamic, gun-wielding image to best sell the toys. When it comes to Bishop, a casual glance may suggest this is another stand-in actor with some silly headgear. But no, look a little closer, and it is actually an image of Lance Henriksen, a production photo that displayed some early contact lens tests. And it just happens to be edited to include the robotic metal plating. I find that pretty amusing. In fact, I think the whole line of Kenner toys and how the characters were molded is quite amusing. And I think Bishop's change is the most interesting of all. They took a somewhat meek character who doesn't touch a single weapon throughout the whole movie and turned him into this ultimate badass robot dude with giant guns. It's bizarre and wonderful at the same time. What do you think of this interpretation of the Bishop character? Do you appreciate it on its own terms, or at least the novelty of it, or do you think it's a disrespectful handling of the character? With NECA, the figure company that has revived a lot of these Kenner figures in recent years with new releases, including opponent Drake, do you think the Bishop figure is due for the same treatment? To be honest, I'd actually really love to see that. But let me know what you think. Please leave a comment below and share your thoughts. As always, I'd like to thank you very much for watching today. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave it a like and be sure to subscribe for all the latest videos. A very special thanks goes out to Brandon James, Grizz4756, Ronnie Jensen, and Xeno Shadowmorph, Queen Tears of the Patreon Hive. Thank you to Gregory Ford and John Griggs, the Hive's Praetorians. A very special thanks goes out to Lady Anne in the Ellen Ripley Tier of Excellence. And in the role of the Wayland yutani Executives, we have Michael Cole, Nicholas Butta, and Wesley A. Weaver Jr. Thank you all. If you'd like to join the Hive and support the channel, check out my Patreon page for exclusive posts and contests. In the meantime, you can catch up with Alien Theory over social media. Follow at Alien underscore Theory on Twitter and at Alien Theory YT on Facebook and Instagram for more. And until next time, this is Alien Theory, signing off.